as you can see from my stature, I'm extremely confronting. <laughs> be afraid, be very afraid. For I am here to tell you, it is time to be brave and to be a warrior. I'm a living testament of that fact. Because through my short life, I'm only 44 years of age, I have come up against times in my life where I need to push through fear. And I know that every one of you here today go through that and go through it from time to time. That is called life. So what I want you to do is I want to take you on this journey of my painterly journey which reflects who I am as a person. And I do live with integrity and brevity because my work is a reflection of who I am as a person. I grew up in a little country town, four and a half hours from Sydney, and we were the only wogs in the village. Therefore, being the only wog in the village, I had to prove myself. I had to be brave. I had to be fierce. I had to show that I was not afraid, that I was not going to join the pack that I was indeed an individual. I had a surname this long and everybody knew it and I was the odd kid. So what did this teach me? It taught me to have a sense of humour. It taught me to internalise the fear and to externalise humour and how to push through. Now, I distinctly remember one occasion when I was in primary school at Grenfell and it was an afternoon of drawing pictures and I sat there and I was drawing and I was drawing and I could hear the teacher saying, OK, stop drawing, time is up. But being who I am, I kept drawing because I was in a meditative state. Hindsight's a beautiful thing. Now, this teacher assumed that I was being facetious or being, you know, not paying attention she was so irate, she came over and ripped up my drawing in front of the whole class. The light bulb went off. Aha! I had her attention. Not that I really knew at that point that this was to be my destiny. But this is where it began. I knew I could hold people. I knew I could get a reaction out of people. And it continues today. As you can see... The work behind me here, it shows a warrior. I believe we all have an internal warrior. We just have to tap into that warrior. Like that day in Grenfell, the first day I went to Grenfell, these kids came up to me and said, mate, do you play rugby league? And I had never played rugby league in my life. I said, yeah, sure. So you know what they did? They got the biggest kid to run at me and I had to tackle that kid. And guess what I did? I flattened him. And that gave me instant kudos. Now I take that notion, that belief system into everything that I do today. With drawing pictures. Yeah, I create beautiful paintings, but I want people to look at those paintings and to think what their life means. I want to ask you that question. Life is too short. Another story, when I was 13, I went through a glass plate door. And I was being groomed to be a great soccer player. And what happened to me was when I went through this uh, glass door, I severed all my tendons in my legs and my arms. And I was, you know, sort of half in and out of a state. And I remember hearing the doctor say to my, my sister, she's a theatre nurse, oh, he may be a paraplegic. Now, I spent four months in this hospital and I had plaster from the waist down. And I used to walk around like this. So because it was such a severe accident, I spent the four months and all I did was draw every day. That's all I did. And it took me to a place. It took me somewhere else. Again, I wasn't fully cognitive of what this meant or how I could utilise this in my life down the track. But the signs were there. And all of a sudden, I was starting to see things differently because I was forced to. I have a saying that I went in a boy 
And I came out of that hospital four months later a man. I remember my bedroom. I used to have soccer posters all over my bedroom wall and I'd think that when I grew up I was going to be like one of those soccer players, you know, play for West Ham United. And I'll never forget it. When I went home, hobbling in, I ripped all those posters off and all of a sudden my drawings went up and it was like my new reality. This is how I conversed. This is how I found peace in the world. This is how I figured out issues in my head. It didn't always have the answers, but it always gave me some sense of clarity. My work is about being true to oneself. My work is about going on that journey. And yes, when I go through starting a painting, I start with gusto. I start with no fear whatsoever. And then somewhere in the middle, I feel like I lose my way and that little voice of fear creeps in. And you know what happens? I tell it to get out of here. And the way that I get out of work off that fear is I keep working through it. I confront it and I move on. Funny enough, another time in my life was when my parents moved um, back to Greece and they wanted me, the prodigal son, to stay in Greece with them. And I said to my father, who's quite a scary looking character, big Grecian moustache, hair like Don King. I looked at him in the eye and I said, sorry, Dad, I have to go back to Australia and get a university degree. And he says to me, you are crazy. I will give you everything here. So I had to look at my father square in the eye and say to him, I'm, this is not for me. I'm out of here. And that took a lot of courage. And I lived with a lot of guilt for a long time because I forced them back to Australia. But, again, I've gone back to the art. Again, I know that's what's going to propel me through life. And that's what I've done. I've had a career for 25 years and I paint about my experiences, such as this painting here. I was always afraid of going to the dentist. And this is a picture about me going to the dentist. But see, that reaction is what means the world to me. Sure, it's great to get paid for what I do. But the ultimate payment for me is that I have that interaction with people, that they too will find some semblance of truth, some semblance of being a warrior, that they too can do what I do. I don't mean painting pictures. I mean about whatever your chosen field is, never to have fear. Because essentially things work out. And fear is a good thing. Make fear your friend. Plant those seeds and go through them. I had a very distinguished career. In 2003, every time you opened a magazine or a newspaper, there was my ugly head staring at you. I was the golden boy of the art world. I could do no wrong. And I was thinking, wow. For five seconds, I took myself very seriously and thought, geez, I'm good. <laughs> but I tell you, Life has a funny way of kicking you in the backside. And all of a sudden, I realised that that was not for me. I lost my voice and I lost my way. And I removed myself from the gallery system and really started to think about who I was and what it was that was important for me. So with that, find your voice and be fearless. Thank you.